The Resolution Foundation predicts that by next year, more than a fifth of the population will be living in absolute poverty. Real household disposable incomes are due to fall by 10% this year and next, the sharpest decline in living standards in more than a century. Food banks are now handing out one emergency parcel of provisions every 13 seconds. As food prices and energy prices soar, low wages and pitiful benefits mean that the poorest households will no longer face a choice between eating or heating their homes this coming winter, but rather will be able to do either adequately. Meanwhile, millions more people are being pushed into hardship and debt. This is a crisis that is increasingly intolerable for the mass of the working class and cannot fail to drive resistance in the coming period. This is FRFI Video, making video essays from the articles out of Fight Racism, Fight Imperialism, newspaper of the Revolutionary Communist Group. The script for this video comes from the article Poverty and Hunger Grip Millions by Mark Moncada from issue 290 of FRFI. In it, we explain how, at its root, the cost of living crisis is a capitalist crisis. And you'll find a link to this issue of the paper down in the description below. While you're there, you can also check out our main YouTube channel, Revolutionary Communist, to see us and our supporters at protests, public meetings, giving speeches at demonstrations, and much, much more. Let's get back to the video. It was precisely the fear that projected rise in annual energy bills by a further £1,500 in October could trigger social unrest on a mass scale that forced Prime Minister Liz Truss to concede a £150 billion bailout package, capping energy bills at £2,500 for two years. Without this money, a direct subsidy to Britain's privatised and bloated energy suppliers, average household bills were forecast to rise to an eye-watering £3,549. The Enfuel Poverty Coalition estimates this would have immediately tipped 9 million more households into poverty. However, the main beneficiaries of the energy price guarantee will be the better off households, in particular those in the Conservative government sees as its key electorate. For the poor, £2,500 bills remain completely unaffordable, with nearly 7 million households still facing fuel poverty over the winter. Many of these are households including vulnerable people who are elderly, disabled or have existing medical conditions, or those in damp, badly insulated housing, which leaves children prone to serious respiratory diseases. Meanwhile, there will be no tax on the energy giants which continue to announce obscene profits and no obligation for them to pay the money back. Centrica, which owns British Gas, the biggest British energy supplier, made first half profits in 2022 of 1.3 billion and paid 59 million pounds to shareholders. BP made profits of 6.9 billion between April and June, more than triple the same period last year. The cost of paying back this bailout will ultimately fall once again on the working class. Already at the end of August, an Office for National Statistics survey found that 45% of bill payers were struggling to pay energy bills. The one-off £400 government grant to every household to ostensibly help struggling families with energy bills is woefully inadequate. 6.9 million households, 16.4 million people will face fuel poverty this winter, up from 4.6 million households last winter. The Labour Party has pledged to keep cuts at the April 2022 level, at £1,971. This is still unpayable for millions of households, as inflation soars and wages and benefits fail to keep pace. The Resolution Foundation's September report, In at the Deep End, projects that the number of people in Britain living in absolute poverty will rise from 11 million in 21-22 to 14 million in 22-23, 21% of the population. It states that relative child poverty is projected to reach its highest levels since the 1990s. The Resolution Foundation points to at an increasingly unequal society, calculating that, in the long term, the wealthiest 10% of households will, by 23-24, have netted £4,700 in cost of living support for that year, 
more than double the £2,200 received by the poorest 10%. Deepening poverty has been driven by systematic cuts to benefits over the past 12 years. And you can see more about that in the FRFI 289 article, The Age of Austerity, which I'll link down in the description below. Unemployment benefits in Britain are the lowest in Northern Europe. Universal credit is just 13% of the average wage. The government's vicious cut last October of the £20 a week uplift during the pandemic, itself a recognition that nobody can afford to live on universal credit, left the poorest households £1,040 worse off. However, we should be clear that restoring it would still leave universal credit at just 16% of the average wage against the EU average of 45%. The reality is that it is impossible for any household to live on the shockingly meagre benefits on offer in Britain today. 5.6 million people currently claim universal credit. The Social Metrics Commission states that an increase in universal credit of at least 10% would be needed to prevent 780,000 more people from being pushed into poverty. And who will fight for that? The Labour Party will not even pledge to restore the £20 uplift inadequate though that is. At the same time, more repressive measures are being introduced for universal credit claimants. On the 26th of September, around 116,000 universal credit claimants are being moved from a light touch regime to the intensive work search scheme, as the earnings threshold qualifying people for the light touch group is increasing from 355 to 494 per month for a single claimant and 567 to 702 pounds a month for a couple. These claimants will be expected to spend more time looking for work and for those in work will be expected to work more hours or have more meetings with work coaches. This will inevitably lead to more punitive benefit sanctions which are already arbitrarily enforced for the slightest breach of stringent rules. Sanctions dramatically reduce benefit payments or stop them completely. 98% of sanctions are given for missing work-focused interviews. This, along with a five-week wait for the first universal credit payment and debt repayments taken directly from UC payments, are the main reasons why people are driven towards food banks. In September, the Department of Work and Pensions, or DWP, rejected cross-party calls to pause debt repayments on UC allowances, as it was not in the claimant's best interests. DWP figures, published in August, show that benefit sanctions are continuing to rise above pre-pandemic levels. A record 59,000 universal credit sanctions were imposed in March, a 160% increase on the pre-pandemic peak of July 2019. Sanctions aimed at forcing people into whatever low-paid work is available or into destitution. Removing benefits leads to health problems, hunger and even death. It is the price that the government is willing to pay and its ideological offensive against claimants. Theresa Coffey, former Work and Pensions Secretary and current Deputy Prime Minister, has attempted to keep the insidious truth under wraps by refusing to publish seven reports and research papers. The impact of the overall benefit cap, deaths of benefit claimants, the impact of universal credit, benefit sanctions, and unpaid carers and work capability assessments. The reality is that the entire benefit system is utterly devoid of humanity, premised as it is entirely on disciplining and punishing the working class, corralling it into the low paid and insecure work that the capitalist system demands. According to Office of National Statistics Analysis from September 2022 of average wages in Britain, Growth in pay fell in real terms on the year in May to July 2022 at 2.6% for total pay and 2.8% for regular pay. While slightly lower than the record fall of 3% for the previous month, the ONS says this remains among the largest falls in growth since comparable records began in 2001. TUC figures for May 2022 show that 57% of people in poverty, which is 8.3 million people, live in a working household. That rises to 75% for children in poverty, a record high. Joseph Roundtree Foundation report published in September found that for a majority of poorer households, support payments do next to nothing to alleviate the increase in the cost of living. Quote, a couple with two children and one parent working full-time on the national living wage, the other not working, reach 76% of minimum income standard, or MIS, without the cost of living support payments. 
the same family only reach 79% of MIS with the payment. As real wages continue to fall in the face of rising inflation, it is the lowest paid workers who are suffering the most. Food inflation hit a new record of 12.4% in August, rising the fastest rate in 14 years and increasing average food bills by £571 a year. Basic food items are increasing in price every week, which is quickly absorbing the government's meagre one-off cost of living support payment of £650 to about 8 million households in receipt of benefits, plus an extra 150 to those on disability benefits. The Trussell Trust, one of Britain's major food bank foundations, has found that 40% of people on universal credit, more than 2 million adults, skipped meals over the summer because they could not afford food. 21% did not cook hot food because they could not afford the fuel costs. 23% missed work, doctor's appointments or the school run because they could not afford public transport or fuel. Trussell Trust food banks have provided 50% more food parcels to people in recent months than they did before the pandemic. An August survey by the Independent Food Aid Network warned that food banks are critically running out of food. With increases in demand and decreases in donations, they fear they will not be able to give food parcels to everyone who needs them this winter. One in five independent food banks has already reduced the size of its food parcels since April. There are more and more first-time users of food banks and people turning up in worse situations. It is no longer portion sizes they are cutting down on, or one meal a day they are missing. Many are going without any food whatsoever for several days. This is happening in the sixth richest country in the world. The British state was happy to fork out tens of millions of pounds for a pageant to mark the death of one of the richest women in the world. It is gung-ho about lifting the cap on bonuses for bankers, promising contemptuously that the wealth will trickle down to the poorest. Meanwhile, more than two and a half million children in Britain are going hungry every day, a figure that will only increase over the coming months. We need to fight back against this obscene system. If you'd like to learn more about the roots of growing poverty in capitalism and why capitalism's endless quest for profit causes such inequality, fight racism, fight imperialism, has tons of educational material on our website linked in the description down below. You can also go online to subscribe to the new upcoming issue of FRFI and of course you can get in touch with us to find out where your local FRFI supporters group is so we can have discussions in person and work together to fight to replace capitalism with a planned system built on needs that is socialism. You can also write into FRFI as a letter. Of course, you can also leave comments under this video and support us by liking and sharing it as well. So hopefully we'll see you soon in person. And if not, then we'll see you back here in a month for another video from Fight Racism, Fight Imperialism.